patients with cancer and with palliative care needs do often do not have access to symptom control medicines. Peer-to-peer -peer learning has also been a tool that has now caused other people mm. to go back and do what they should do. A multi-pronged approach again to funding. So a very wide range there contributing to uh, governments, contributing to workforce capacity, uh, benefiting the patients, mm. partnerships both in country and out of the continent and so much more. Uh, you mentioned a lot mm. of these researches in the course of your work and the, even mentoring. I know that we have a lot of um, young doctors doctors that are in training that go from Nigeria to Uganda to learn that uh, palliative care system. Most um, admirable and mm. most commend you for the leadership position that you have taken in this. So my next question to you is that having been involved in these um, numerous researches that spans the HIV space, cancer, and of course palliative care, and you've contributed to several publications and books in these fields. How do you ensure, I, you touched on the implementation a little bit, but let us know how we can learn from your experience, ensuring that the findings from these studies translates into practical improvements in the patient care. You know, at the patient level, how can we see that uh, work that you're doing improve the lives of patients living with cancer. Okay, thank you very much. Um, as you know, to to be able to pull off any program, it takes a number of players. The first group that is very important are the policy makers in government, and especially Minister of Health, Minister of Finance, and Parliament. And so we use a multi-pronged approach. Our interaction with ministers, we interact with African ministers of health every three years with their delegations. And we discuss with them issues in creative care and uh, look at the challenges they have, look at the resources they have, examples they can learn from across continents, I mean, from across countries. And so we do that deliberately every three years so that the ministers have an idea. And then we also engage with the providers through the Afri International African Palliative Care Conference where people come and share their achievements, but also their challenges. And then we mm. are able to then create an opportunity where those who need training, get the training, those who need small grants to improve, we get them small grants, but also we get involved in supporting individual hospices and uh, service providers as they develop their uh, services. For example, to that effect, we've worked out a, a costed um, um, essential palliative care package for integration into um, universal health coverage, which we've then given to countries so that they can then implement that. We've also given them tools like the, um, um, the palliative care standards so that facilities can measure and see where they stand in terms of the uh, acceptable, acceptable standards in terms of delivery. So our engagement at the health work level, at the health training level, at uh, policy maker level, mm -hmm. brings all these together oh, to deliver together. service. Mm -hmm. The other thing that we do is to help people move from one country to go and see a best practice in another. For example, when we were implementing a project in Liberia, we had our um, colleagues from Nigeria led by 
visit and support the people in Gambia and Liberia on how they can implement their services better. Then we had those from Togo visit Malawi to see how Malawi is doing it. And then we had the team from Eswatini or Swaziland move to VITS Hospice in South Africa to see how that is being done. And then we had the team from DRC and Rwanda and Kenya come to Uganda to see real service delivery. So peer-to-peer -peer learning has also been a tool that has now caused other people mm. to go back and do what they should do. And we, when, they, when the visits are done, we ensure that we have multidisciplinary sites. For example, when they come to Uganda, they will visit the Uganda Cancer Institute, see their patient navigation system and uh, how they deliver services. Uh, they will go to the Morphine Reconstitution Factory at Hospice Africa, Uganda. They go to National Medicine to see morphine and other uh, controlled medicines. They will visit a hospice and see how patients get services in the home. So it's a number of things that we do to get to where we want to be. Get, to get the implementation. And indeed, uh, some of it is translating and we can see the effects. Uh, you mentioned morphine when you were talking there. And uh, of course, funding. Funding is an issue. And the fact that you have to give some small grants to organizations and researchers. And um, mm. even to access uh, mm. the palliative care, the patients have a lot of issues with funding. So one mm. of the things that was advocated for mm. by our team in Nigeria, who we know quite well, is um, a palliative care fund which was started and i found out that they give uh, the sum of 50 naira for uh, 50000 naira per patient and a vial of morphine costs 200000 naira so it's supportive but it's still not going to be able to get them the cost i don't think they give the patients the fund directly it goes into an e wallet in the hospital but it's still not enough how can we how can we help with this funding issue it's 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 funding for treatments it's funding for diagnosis it's funding for palliative care in lmic's it's funding for research and even mm -hmm. becoming a doctor a nurse healthcare professionals and we're seeing we're losing all our healthcare professionals to higher income countries now uh, so this is a bit of a maybe political question but what what do we do about this access in africa Okay, um, let me start with the morphine itself. The, for morphine, the model that works is to, because morphine is cheap. If, it, if you are not buying it from a private company, it's very cheap. A bottle of 500 mils uh, costs uh, about three US dollars. I don't know how much that would be in Naira. 6,000. Yeah, that would be. So a bottle, once produced using the model we have in Uganda, is three dollars we need to integrate it into existing cancer care so that you have the same system that delivers all the the rest of the cancer care delivering palliative care and then linking it with the 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 system that reaches the patient's home for example in some of the countries they have a strong phc program that is paid for by government the same PHC program would deliver palliative care, would deliver the morphine and, and other medicines. Uh, for If you take the example of Botswana, Botswana, they even have a defined package for a patient who needs palliative care in the household, which includes, the, of course, your usual medicines. It includes things like diapers, stomach bags, and even a food basket. So we need to to encourage governments to look at practical um, models that can be delivered. And that also goes with other investments. So you've been invested in a nice cancer um, um, If it's hospital-based, then you know where all your patients are coming from, you know where they are, you know what stages they are, and then you are able to link them to some of these services. So. It, it, it goes with um, using the numbers um, mm -hmm. and the infrastructure that you have.
to deliver the service you have. But we know that governments are limited, are also limited by resources. So governments need to work with the non-government sector, with the faith-based sector, to, to reach the same goal as well. If you take the example of Botswana, where they don't have a hospice and there is a hospice, then government will contribute some money to that hospice to deliver the service where government is not able to reach. The same happens in Uganda as well. They give some money to some of the hospices, either in, in cash or some items in kind, so that the non-government hospices can support patients where they provide those services. So it is a, a, a multi-pronged approach again to funding. I had you talk about the palliative care fund. We, mm -hmm. In the last training we had for hospices in Africa, which took seven months, we, mm -hmm. we developed a tool that can help national palliative care associations and cancer organizations to be able to develop a national palliative care fund which they can break up into various levels, service delivery, research, education, and then the admin component, so that they can also tap some money from the private sector to complement that which government is putting in the pool. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to Onka Daily on YouTube. Hit the bell icon to stay updated.